Well, I was uh, looking at some CME, continuing medical education, um, the other day, and I realized it has happened. The, <clears throat> now that CGM, continuous glucose monitoring, has become available and inexpensive, there's a lot of information starting to come out about glucose metabolism. <clears throat> Many physicians who focus on this, like myself, feel like problems with glucose metabolism are far more um, common than you think. I had a patient yesterday, for example, who came to me for um, a, um, an evaluation, <clears throat> said she was having some problems with cognition, but also in part of the history said, no, I've never had any problems with uh, my with diabetes or prediabetes. I'm fine in that area. Um, we, as we usually do, we went ahead and got an OGTT, an oral glucose tolerance test. Her, um, her fasting glucose was good. It was like in the mid eighties. The one hour was like 130, not too bad, but the two hour was 165 or something like that. Then she told me when she and I were talking about this, she said, yep, I did some, uh, monitoring and stick uh, finger sticks afterward and the finger stick said my blood sugar continued to rise to over 200 and she knew that that was uh, in many ways or uh, for by many definitions fit the definition for uh, diabetes again yet another of many patients that I've had um, that have had the same experience they're <clears throat> a lot closer to diabetic than they thought, uh, and clearly insulin resistant. Um, <clears throat> we'll talk about some research which just came out showing exactly that on more of a population basis. But first, a brief introduction. My name is Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D, Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R. -E um, this is the Prevention Channel. We help you understand the things that are uh, killing and disabling Americans and other adults. Um, things ranging from uh, herpes, zoster, to uh, colon cancer. But again, the big killers are um, heart attack, stroke, uh, cardio, excuse me, cardiovascular disease, things that are very much associated with burning and inflammation of the arteries. We talk about cardiovascular inflammation and we um, help you understand the science behind it. So the science behind this is that <clears throat> diabetic level glucose spikes seen even in healthy adults. This was the headline that I saw in uh, Medscape. Actually, I'm going to go into the study itself. I pulled that and I'll cover that in the next uh, video. But in this video, I'll just give a few basic facts about the study itself. It was done by, uh, a, um, by Heather Hall, a graduate student at Stanford. Uh, they developed three glucotypes, and what the glucotypes were, were, um, pardon the, the idioms there, what the glucotypes were, um, minimal, moderate, and severe variability, of glucose uh, in the bloodstream or in the interstitial fluid. Um, <clears throat> importantly, said Hall and her colleagues, we found that even individuals considered normoglycemic by standard measures exhibit high glucose variability using CGM, uh, continuous glucose monitoring with glucose levels reaching, reaching pre-diabetic and even diabetic ranges, 15% for pre-diabetic and 2% for diabetic ranges, respectively. So you're a healthy uh, adult, you think you don't have any diabetes problems, 2% of the time you may actually fit the definition of diabetes. Now, <clears throat> Uh, uh, there's some folks out there who are critical of the CGM. I, I know uh, John's done a video on this, uh, this channel talking about his frustration with uh, using CGM. And uh, actually, I think he stopped using it. <clears throat> I agree, you don't want to use CGM alone, uh, the Libre, uh, for things like decisions on treatment. But you do, it is very helpful in terms of helping you understand your pattern. And that's what this is all about. 
helping us understand our patterns when we thought we didn't have a problem. Uh, anytime you get the, uh, an unusual value, by the way, you should check it uh, with the finger stick. <clears throat> so let's go on to talk a little bit more about this study, or the, the coverage of this study. Uh, in the second part of the study, they fed everybody a cereal, a standardized meal. Um, it was cereal, raisins, and milk, and it caused a glycemic spike in everybody. It doesn't matter who, didn't matter who and what their variability level was. Now, they did admit it's a small study. It was like 57 people. It's more of what they call a hypothesis-generating uh, study. And again, many of us have had similar hypotheses. Um, actually, Ann Peters uh, from UC Southern, uh, USC, uh, University of Southern California in LA, told uh, Med Medscape Medical News, it hasn't proven anything, but boy, do I see this clinically. And if they have all these high spikes, my treatment is I'll get their A1Cs down to 5.6 and I'll do whatever I can to reduce variability in these spikes in the hope that we'll see some decrease in progression of, car of cardiovascular disease. Now this whole thing about <clears throat> waiting till late after somebody's full-blown diabetic with years of disease and trying to drop their hemoglobin A1C, I did a series on that and that probably doesn't work. But again, remember, she's talking about people who early pre-diabetic uh, even maybe don't know by standards would say they don't have a, a pre-diabetes problem at all. Now, <clears throat> she's worried that these spikes increase cardiovascular risk and even cancer risk. And her point is none of us know because we haven't seen the data from large trials. I would say go back and look at those trials. Um, some of them actually did show imp significant improvement. These were very large trials. Um, the uh, uh, VA study uh, regarding diabetes and prediabetes. You go back and you do follow up on these and for people that were in prediabetic phase, if you decrease their spikes, you do decrease the progression of their cardiovascular risk. Um, <clears throat> So she goes on to say you'd need to have a trial with 2,000 to 5,000 people to demonstrate this. Again, they did in some of those studies, um, and they did demonstrate it. I do, however, expect to see a lot of new uh, studies coming out in this area uh, regarding this. It's, gonna, it's opening up a whole new field of understanding regarding diabetes. Thank you very much.